family. I'll turn this down. Gotta love Maroon 5 and Adam Levine, you know? I gotta show you guys a couple things. I've been asked a couple things, so I thought I'd share. My best friend, Diane, who I wrote about this morning, <laughs> gave me this beautiful velvet piece of material. I used to sit on a couch in uh, Sturgeon Bay in my apartment, which I love and I wish I still had. Um, and I would do my readings and it was hard to, I needed something to grip. And I said, I needed a really pretty material. And she, she sent me this. I've had it forever and it works in a different way here. I use it. Oh, bummer. I've gotten a couple little burn marks from my incense blowing on it. I didn't see that. That's a drag. But um, I guess it's just because it's used and it's loved, right? I cover my cards every night. And the intention that goes... See, intention is very important. I cover my cards. And as I cover them, they're kept safe. And my energy is kept inside. So every day, after I finish working with these cards, it doesn't matter what time or day or night it is, I pick up my beautiful, beautiful piece. And I fold it. And I put it away to the side to open up my cards and then I set myself up to go. I've got all the stuff I need here. I've got my crystal pointer, I've got my incense lighter, I've got my cloves for my infuser, all my books, my angel numbers books, my animal totem um, tidbits and all of my decks that I that I choose to use at this time. So this morning <clears throat> I'm going to light us up with our, this is my favorite, all-time favorite incense. This is um, the incense from Insight Gallery in Sedona, Arizona. It's an art gallery that my friend, she became a friend. I went there and I bought a picture off of her. I should show you guys the picture that I bought. I have still to get it framed because I, I had it up in my home place in Sedona because it was, it's called Night Birth, Night Rebirth actually. And it was what I was going through. It was literally my rebirth as, as I was awakening on my path fully into my spiritual role as a teacher and uh it's the most it's me and it's gorgeous and but when I left Sedona I knew it wasn't it wasn't meant to hang on the wall here it needs to be in the home where I'm meant to stay um I'm gonna get it and show it to you it's a bummer because it's gotten bent very very important to me <clears throat> very very important to me and unfortunately because it's been four years or maybe has it been three no it's been four it's four years um, the corners have gotten a little bit bent and uh, I'll have to get a really really fine art eraser <clears throat> to go around the edges to get it um, to get the little pieces on my, uh, the white part of it but it's called Night Birth, it's signed original, and it's Pamela. This is my 2005, it was done. The original painting is hanging in her art gallery. But this is me, and look at me. I don't know, guys, if you guys remember me always speaking. This is my white horse, my unicorn, and I'm on his back. And look what we've got above us. Now, at first I wasn't certain who they were. At the time, I knew it was the Red Hawk, because that's me. And I asked her this last trip when I got back, and she said, yes, it is. It's the Red Hawk, the messenger, which is who I am. And the other one, I don't know if it's the eagle or if it's the osprey. It's got white on the wings. It makes me think that it's my osprey, which is my twin. <clears throat> but so here she is, naked, open, vulnerable, and she's getting grounded, which is, what I, which is what happens to me. Look at the red sand. That's what happens to me when I go to Spirit, to Sedona. I get grounded. And I'm open, I'm naked, I'm vulnerable. I'm, it's a rebirth, I'm new. It's just, it's like being reborn again. I was too much in my head, right? There was a lot going on. And this is what happens when I go to Sedona. I have so many downloads that this, there's a lot for me to handle. And at this time I was struggling, but there's so much healing and unconditional love between my twin and I, and also by spirit. Look at these beautiful, gentle eyes. Incredible. So my goal is to get a beautiful frame for this. It's got to be a natural wood frame is what I want. Um, I'm, I've been on the lookout for the last three years trying to find one and still not have found one. It has to go up. It matches my furniture. It match I mean, look at this. I just realized i got to show you this. And, and I had all of my furniture was here in California, right? Here's my 
These were my mother's. Well, that was mine, the leather couch, or leather chair, the library chair. This is actually my twin's chair, which Liger has marked. But this was my mother's, and this was my mother's, and this was my mother's. I only have a couple of things that were my mother's, but look at the color. Look at the colors, how everything goes with what I own, right? This is very, very important to me. So wherever I go, this, and I end up, this is what needs to come with me. I have to finally get it framed. Get it framed. It's interesting. Someone I love was framed. Okay. Um, I saw that in my dream last night. God, my dreams were gnarly. I don't know about you guys, but my dreams were intense. I asked for answers, and wow, the answers that came were not what I expected to watch. It was uh, intense, to say the very, very least. I woke up exhausted because I was <clears throat> running. I was going through everything that was happening with, in what I saw. Clearly, it wasn't me. But wow, looks like things are wrapping up, and hopefully that's the case. Um, today, what else am I supposed to talk to you about? Um, I've been asked about my, my sage wands because it's Christmas time, and people are thinking of getting very unique and useful and beautiful and powerful gifts for themselves and as well as loved ones. I was asked this morning, and so I'm, 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 being, I'm going to show you what I have left. I don't have much right now, but I can, I can custom order. Um, it's not a problem for me. If you have a specific crystal, I have several on my page that you can look at um, that adorn the crystal, I mean, that adorn the sage wands. I have two, one super jumbo and one jumbo, and two medi, I guess these are ones of, I, I, you know what, at this time, because it's Christmas, I'll give them to you as mediums, even though I think they were larges, but I've only got four left. So I'll show them to you. This is a jump. This is the super jumbo. And it's got leopard skin jasper. And it's got a key and adorning it. And the color, I don't know if you see the color now. It's, it's kind of a cream. This is the biggest one I've ever made. This has rose quartz, the most powerful of the healing love, unconditional loving stones. It's wrapped with the blue as well as the silver. And it's got a silver key, key to someone's heart, or maybe to your own. And then we have Australian opal wrapped with gray and silver and a silver angel's wing. These two are the mediums now. They were largest. <clears throat> and this is a jumbo. This is also Australian opal wrapped in tan and natural cord. And it's got the golden key, the golden key. So these are available on my page. Um, go to my website, which is www.thewhispers... Uh, no, it's not. That was my old website. You know I've done that a couple times. www.theangelswhisper.com And uh, it's Sherry Columbus, S-H-E-R-R-I-C-O-L-U-M-B-U-S -R -R -E at Yahoo, all one word. Um, that's my, my email address. My website, there is a tab for the ceremonial sage wands the queen of wands ceremonial sage wands you can go and you can read about them and look at them i also have the little sachets that are filled with the loose sage and they also will come with a reiki charge crystal each crystal is charged with reiki healing it's very very powerful anyone that everyone that's gotten them has been very very happy so this one is a large sachet and i have small ones as well if you just want like a little inexpensive one, this would be $5. I can't remember how much the large ones are, but this is, gives, gives you an idea. And I've got blue, I've got red, I've got different colors. Um, and of course, they each come with a crystal, a Reiki charged healing crystal, so that you can burn your loose sage in a, in a dish like I do over here. Um, I can show you at the end of this reading, possibly, um, how that works. Actually, maybe I'll show you right now. I'm trying to do, uh, remember all the things that I've been asked. So when I, I wrap the wands, I have loose sage that's left, and I keep the loose sage. And this is how I keep it in here myself so that I can burn it. So we'll bring over this. And what I do is I have sand in the bottom. I'll show it to you just a second. Let's clean it all up. I just 
took it out of the lake. You could take it out of the desert or you could use dirt if you want. You could use pretty sand, whatever. It's just, it's just a base that you, that you have to have. So there's the sand. And I put a shell inside here. It's kind of like a little base for the sage to sit on. And I'm going to move my, my uh, incense stick over here because I don't want it to burn up when I light the sage on fire. So this is good, right? We need to do some clearing. I do after last night's dreams. Oh, my word. Okay, so here's some loose sage. You just put it in like that. And where did I put my... Good Lord, Sherry. I knocked my little... I knocked my Eiffel Tower over. Not good. I wonder why. My Eiffel Tower got knocked off his feet. Well, that's what I watched in my dream. Well, here. I don't know where I put it, but I'll take another. So... We light our sage. It's best to do it really with a, um, a, a stick, you know, like a, a match stick so you can go down underneath and get it lit up. It's hard to get it down underneath, but there we go. Let's get it good and smoky. So there we have sage going. Now, sage, with the sage wands, when you light them on the end, you don't want to burn them all up. Somebody uh, misunderstood. They thought they had to light up the entire sage stick and, and, and let it go. And I said, no, 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 you just light it. And it generally, the way the Indians use it, it will light. And when it puts itself out, that's as much as you need. But if you're going to do a blessing in a house or a, a big clearing in a home, then you want to, there we go, see? Um, sorry, there we go. That's working good. Um, when you want to uh, do a large area, then you can light it and, and blow on it like I do, but to, to get it, to get it moving. But generally, you allow it to burn itself out, um, and it's just the tip. You don't want to waste it, and it's not necessary to use that much. Ooh, we need all that, so that's great. Um, so what else? That those are in the sachets, so that's that's for that. What else was I supposed to talk to you about? Maybe I'll remember as I'm going along. I'm trying to, I really need that actually this morning because after last night, I, I just, it was karmic cycles. You know, it's interesting. I told you, someone said to me, someone's chanting karma, karma, you know, and I want to laugh in your face. And I thought, don't, don't do that because it's not me. You're laughing. It's not my face. You're laughing. And it's, it's your own karma. And I watched it last night and it was not good. It was upsetting and sad. And, and I hope that, um, People are now ready to move on and allow the past to go and have seen things for what they are. So today we're going to be working with uh, Mermaid Oracle. I heard, of it, heard it in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and remember, I lost several of these cards. I lost the, the guidebook. I lost several of the cards. I lost a lot of my cards. And then I located them all again. They all came back. So <clears throat> there is one card that I will never recover. And it's down at the bottom of my lake underneath my dock house. It was it blew off over the board overboard and it was a mermaid. It was from the Shapeshifter Oracle. So one day I'll probably have to rebuy that book. And I mean that deck. I mean they're both pretty beaten up. I use them all the time, so I'll do that. So today I'm just gonna ask for two cards. I'm not going deep. These are deep cards and it's our it's our weekly reading today. So um, I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know if I'm going to go up to the mountains or if I'm going to go out onto the lake. It's kind of windy up for the lake. I'm not certain where I'm going to go. Um, I almost felt like I wanted to stay inside but then, so I wouldn't be distracted. But then I thought, you know what? The next best place for me to, is to go up to the mountains. I, I don't really get distracted up there either. It's very, very peaceful and very beautiful. And um, Maybe it's there. I don't know. So correct for neutrality on all levels. What is it that you wish us to know? <sighs> Emotional today. Thinking about my best friend that lives so far away from me, thousands of miles away in Wisconsin. I miss I miss her and, and my friend Alexa and my mama Sherry, my papa Terry and Uncle Phil and all my soul family that you know says, Can you just jump in the car and come see us? And God, I would so I would love to do that. I, I can't think of anything I would love to do more than it than that, except for if my twin went with me, but I want to go back there so bad. If money wasn't an object, you know, too bad it is. Correct for neutrality. You know, I, I, it's almost, it's rolling around in my head. I just wonder if I should just do it. 
jump into my car and go. I don't know. All right, for you guys, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I hope you're having a relaxing day. I hope you're getting excited if, you're, if there's going to be holiday time being spent with family and friends. As I said, I have, you know, loved ones that aren't my natural family, but they're, they're, they're just as tight, just as important. <sighs> this song, Don't Forget Me, I Beg. I remember you said, sometimes it lasts in love and sometimes... It hurts instead. I had this dream three years ago. This person went <clears throat> and said that to my twin. Please don't never forget me. And it was someone from his past and it was ending. I don't know if that's what I watched last night, but wow, I saw this. I heard this. And now that the song is playing, I'm feeling like spirit says, pay attention to synchronicities, you know, songs, messages, you're being taught things. And don't just don't doubt what you're getting. Wow, I don't know, I've got to, I guess I've got to get my energy into these cards. Tell me when, stop me when we're, when we're done. Show me when it's done, please. Show me when it's done. I love the way these cards shuffle. Oh, that's it, okay. <clears throat> Atlantis. Oh, do I ever love this. <sighs> Thinking about my Lemurian crystals. Let's bring them up front and center. Focus. Fire gun. Someone to me now. Fire gun. Someone to me now. All right. Funny that I felt that one was the most powerful. This is the phantom. The phantom is lying next to the healer. Oh, that makes sense to me personally. So this little one is is the one. Okay. So you see this beautiful mermaid. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I always wanted to do my hair that color. God, she's gorgeous. Hmm. I love the colors. The blue. Archangel Michael's colors. The colors of the sea are so calming and relaxing, aren't they? She's got her hands up, and she's, she's in front of her. The city of Atlantis, of the ancient secrets and the ancient knowledge. It's alive still. Even though it's under the sea, it's alive. It's there. There's, there's knowledge coming from there, and she's fully embracing it, and she's flowing up towards the light. And the colors of healing all around her. The kelp forest, the mermaid in the forest. That's what I said before. There she is. The mermaid in the forest and there's a great healing taking place there's also the color of communication all around her so communication with spirit this is a time when there's a lot of change happening in our world very very quickly there can be a lot of beautiful things happening in this world and there's a lot of really really scary painful things happening at the same time and this is a time of great development for you. Rapid development is the message. Excellent. Success. <clears throat> you have this ability all around you. The light is pulling to you. But you're going to have to be courageous in order to embrace it. Because there's so much that pushes against you. You have to stay connected to spirit. Hold. See how she's holding her hands up. She's open to spirit. She's open, naked, vulnerable to spirit. And her hands are reaching up to the light. Up to spirit's light. Water is the greatest conductor of spirit's energy, and the light is shining down from spirit into the, to the city of Atlantis. Focus, fire, gun. We all need somebody to lean on. Keep the vision alive. This is about striking a balance between selflessness and your own self. This is you coming from a place of love, but not allowing yourself to be bullied or brutalized or, or manipulated or maligned. This is, this is stepping into your personal power. If you are not facing things in the right way, you're refusing to look at this momentous change in your life that's in front of you. You have to be very, very careful about how you speak. Water, as I said, is a conductor. Be careful of what you think and what you say, the words that you speak, because it's transmitted. Are you honoring your talents? 
Have you been relying too much on others and their opinions and their feelings and not honoring your own? Recognizing the needs that you need for self. Stepping into your own capabilities and bringing them to the surface. That's where she's going. She's going to the surface. I know who I am. I know where I'm connected. I know the pearls of wisdom that adorn me. Look at all the pearls of wisdom. My mermaid on my stomach. I can't show it to you right now because I'm not really dressed. But um, she, has, she has pearls around her wrist and she has pearls around her throat and she has pearls around her waist. Those are... That's the tool belt. On me, it's around the waist, very low, but it's a, it's a belt of pearls. It's also a belt of sand dollars, which is my worth. So all of the things that we've gone through have made us who we are. It's, we are worthy. That's what the sand dollars represent to me. This is my self-worth. It's right around the center, which represents your solar plexus, which, which means I am worthy. Remember my, pu my puzzle piece that was missing for me for so long? I am worthy. I have recognized the dark and the light. And, and recognize that they are the yin to, my, the yin to the yang is, is important. And look at her dark hair and her light skin. It's the same thing. There's a blending. This is what you need to recognize about yourself. Bring everything of who we are to the surface. Too much has been buried deep beneath the sea of your emotional waters. The treasures that you are, the gift that you are, that you have not honored, has been buried far too long and far too deep. It's now time for you to rise up. Like the song that I have on my on my on my own page it's rise rise up i sang it to you guys there i read it to you guys yesterday right i won't just survive you will see me thrive i'm beyond the archetype no matter how you shake my core my roots they run deep deep down into the ocean floor don't doubt it don't doubt it victory is in my veins i know it i will not negotiate i will fight i will transform and when the fire's at my feet and the vultures start circling and you're whispering you're out of time but still i rise this is no mistake, no accident. When you think the final nail is in, think again. Don't be surprised. I will rise. I must stay conscious through the madness and chaos. There's so much of that going on in this world right now, all around us, and maybe even in our own families and in our own minds. And so I call out to my angels, and they say, Oh, ye of so little faith, don't doubt it, don't doubt it. Victory is in your veins. You know it, you know it. You will not negotiate. Just fight it. Just fight it and be transformed. And you will rise. This is what Spirit's asking for you to do. You will rise. You have everything you need. Look at you. You're magnificent. You are a magnificent creature. Completely naked of the outside trappings. There is nothing on this mermaid except for who she is and what she has learned. And the lessons that she has got embedded in her very self. She has no trappings around her, no car, no clothes, no status, nothing. She just knows who she is. Right now, you may have a deep feeling of connection to crystals, to sea creatures. Look at me. Look at my sea serpent. Look at my seahorses. They represent my twin. Right? Are you connected to the crystals? Have you, have you been having an un unusual draw to crystals, to the animals of the ocean? Because the, the, the orca whale is about following your soul's path. Do you know and have, have you recognized that you have the ability to heal and, and, and to deal and work with and, and communicate with others telepathically? A desire that's very, very strong to do something more meaningful than your life, with your life than, than what has happened, what you've allowed yourself to do. Maybe, it's interesting, this morning I was looking at wetsuits. I went downstairs and I was putting packages away and I looked up at the wetsuits hanging on the wall. Are you looking at wetsuits? Are you thinking about diving? I'm, a, I'm an ocean diver, a deep, deep ocean diver. Are you thinking about that? Has, that? has that come up to your mind for some strange reason? Have you been seeing dolphins or, or a, sea, a, a sea turtle? Has that, has that come into your existence? Have you been thinking about that? This is a connection to ancient sites, a connection to Atlantis, to Lemuria. That's why the Lemurian crystals were calling to me, and they came just now. And why I'm called to Sedona, the ancient site of Sedona. Are, do you have that happening right now for you? Do you feel like you're, you are one with spirit and that angels walk with you? That you know that you are an earth angel? I just spoke about my best friend Diane this morning. I know I'm in the presence of an earth angel. We recognize each other. That's what she said. She says, I come from Jesus. I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Do you feel a very close connection to animals or to fairies, to the wizards of the world? My fish is named Merlin. 
You know, I think about all of these things. You're feeling less and less afraid of the powers that you have, the way that you are able to communicate with others that may not even be in your presence or maybe even in this time period. Have you had dreams where you've communicated with people from other times? I have. And, and maybe you're ready to go with the flow now. You're not really so worried about making mistakes. You're just allowing spirit to carry you in the current. You know that spirit is drawing you up. You have a sharpening of your abilities. Things are coming to light. You're understanding things better. You have a deeper appreciation. You know, I was just looking seconds ago. I wonder if it's still there. Let me see if I can erase it. The first thing when I was speaking about my twin... It's not going to be there now. I moved my page. But Tesla came up. I looked at that and, and, and it made me think of the Eiffel Tower. Tesla. You know? Deep thinkers. Technology that's very, very deep. But coming from different, you know, different sources. Ideas that came, that sounded outrageous. And, and just a deep appreciation for experimentation and developing your abilities and seeing how fast you can, you can move forward. You can go from zero to 100 in, in seconds now you're vib you're vibrating have you had that feeling have you ever felt your body literally vibrate right now all of this is heightened for you beautiful beautiful time see there's a beautiful beautiful things happening even when things are so scary around us also very beautiful things connect to that pay attention to that it's very very important We have one more, and then I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be. One more. Show us when it's time, please. You know, it's interesting. I was just going to show you. My best friend, Diane, who I spoke about, look at her sitting right next to the selenite wand she gave this to me it's a mermaid she got that for one of, for me on one of her travels isn't that beautiful little mermaid sitting on the rock and inside the seed pearls I thought about that I got into my mermaid yesterday my car it's what she's called the mermaid she's green of course and it's interesting because she's got tan leather interior and a tan top so I always felt like she was like a mermaid in the forest, you know? Same colors for the forest, but she's the mermaid. I used to have a li personalized license plate, dive chick. <laughs> and uh, I took her for a spin yesterday, and I thought, geez, I don't know, maybe I'm not supposed to sell her. I'm so connected to her, you know? Correct for neutrality on all levels, please. Show me the one that's the most important. Show us when it's time. I'm watching two seagulls play outside. Going with the flow. A seagull says, allow life to come to you, right? That's going with the flow. You're not fighting it. You're doing your part and you're relaxing. It's a Sunday after all. Allow life, allow life to come to you. Show itself. For me, it's, it's allowing myself to receive. And I have been, and I've been so blessed and fortunate. Thank you so much. I was counting my blessings this morning. Correct neutrality on all levels. Thank you for anyone who um, shares these readings. I have them on YouTube, and, and the more we share them, the more people get the knowledge that Spirit wants to share. If you would like to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, do that, and you will be given notice. Oh, that's it. Okay. Also, thank you for any donations that you make to my website at angelswhisper.com. It allows me to do all of this work that I do Continue to do it freely because, as I said, i got to pay my own bills too. So that is always appreciated. There is a donation button right on the payment option page. So I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Divine Sensuality. Oh, I like this one. I like this one a lot. Look at that siren. Ooh, making love erotica. I am so ready. And check out with lying right next to her. The goddess wrapped in unconditional love. And passion. Oh, everything is always lined up right where we need it, right? Check it out. Look, at, look, look, it's all there. Yes, let's point this. Let's point this. 
right at that divine sexuality. We'll bring this in. So, the number 22. I didn't look, pay attention to the number before, but the number 22 is definitely talking about keeping your thoughts positive and your things are going as they're meant to go. I think we've had this number quite a bit lately. The angels can see your positive results of your prayers and they want you to have patience and stay optimistic while the final details are being worked out in heaven. This is an urgent call from the angels to keep the faith. Even if you don't see what's happening, there is stuff going on behind the scenes. Please trust. Please, please trust. So divine sensuality. Now, remember yesterday I spoke to you guys about sacred sexual bliss. I spoke about the guy in Sedona, that freak who's got this cult happening. And it's uh, based. He, it's disgusting because he's basing it on spirituality. It has nothing to do with spirituality. He's sleeping with children. It's free love. Everyone's having sex with each other. And he's a... He's a very good-looking guy, and he's turned the sacred sexual act into something disgusting. This is talking about making love in a sacred, sacred manner. The mermaids are protectors and champions of sexuality and freedom and allure and power. This is what they're known for. Look at the color of the, of the sacred. Oh, God, it's just on fire. I love that. We're talking about the physical bliss to experience that with someone when you kiss them, when you touch them, when you make love to them, even just a hug, it's intimacy, but it's sacred. They're talking about how important it is that you only share your body with someone when you meet them on every level. My twin asked me if I would be with him and I said, I would have to meet you on every level, emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, every single level, and then I would. And I said, sex is sacred to me. And he said, it is to me as well. We have to be careful of who we make love with, where we make love, when we make love, why we make love. Not in a group setting with a bunch of people around, everybody having an orgy, calling it spirituality. That's hedonism. It has nothing to do with spirit. It has nothing to do with a sacred sexual act. There's too many tainted beliefs on sexuality. It is not what spirit wants. It's not what spirit condones. Even the way people treat their bodies and the way they behave. It's, 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 you must treat your body as a temple. Honorably. You don't show your body off into the entire world in, in a slutty manner and think that you are an honorable person or a respectful person. Or respectable. It's not treating your body as a temple. Why should everyone get to see what you have? It's precious. It should be for the one that you love. The mermaid is, 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 has become a... a they, they called her the temptress of the sea. She's the one who pulled the, 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 the men at sea into the, into the waters. Right? She draws many lovers to her. She's a symbol of danger. So think about what the danger is with this, this mermaid. Maybe you're ready to dive into your own physical expression of this sacred sexual bliss. Maybe it feels dangerous to you. Through making love with, with your sacred partner. Maybe you're in a relationship already and you're going to be going, growing and going to a deeper level of intimacy with this one. This morning I was, I was using my uh, Kwanzaa wand that my best friend Diane gave it to me. And it's, it's used in massage. And I've said again and again, I want to, and she just sent me this romance oil, essential oil, right? And, and you use that Kwanzaa wand. It's brass and wood and copper. It's very healing. I've been running through the jungle with the wolves to get to you. All right, babe, then you come back get to me so at this time it could be about massage maybe it's about dancing closely with the one that you love oh what a beautiful feeling but spirit wants you to reconnect to your feeling of physicality explore your sensuality it's not wrong it's very very beautiful so many things that religion and culture and other people have put on us that make us feel dirty about or or maybe things that have happened in our lives that have has, have tainted our beliefs on sexuality so that women can't enjoy themselves fully or even men. A lot of times people feel that if you embrace your sexuality, you're a wanton woman or you're, you're a player. or you're, There's nothing wrong with ex, ex, expressing yourself sexually if it's in an honorable way. I know that a lot of people are taught that if someone expresses themselves, like right now, me expressing myself sexually and saying that and, and 
or she's she's somebody she's a dangerous woman you've got to be careful around her or she, that's inappropriate that's wrong and, and and it's good to have seductress in us my twin said that to me one day I was touching him I was kissing him and he said you're seducing me interesting I thought he meant it as a compliment he might have meant it in a fearful way I don't know I didn't think that I was I didn't know that I was doing that I just loved him there she is our little victorious totem for the morning everybody has a bit of a seductress within us you want to be seduced by the one that you love it's a good thing but the one that's able to show us how how we can enjoy our own bodies here I am going to speak now something that you may feel uncomfortable with but you need to hear it you need to know how to pleasure yourself if you don't know how to pleasure yourself, you aren't going to be able to pleasure your partner. And you're not going to be able to help them understand how to pleasure you. So maybe it's about teaching one another. What a wonderful thing to teach one another. Wow. I've never been really good at that, you know. I've been married before, but I was never connected the way I was when my twin and I came together. That was not something I'd experienced before. And it was like everything went on automatic pilot. I was seducing him. I almost laughed. I thought, wow, really? Me? My body just knew what to do because I was moved by him, by my connection. This is a very healing thing. It's a healing, loving way to express yourself. Our bodies, to give your body to someone in this way is the greatest gift. Please don't mistrust your own body. Please don't hate your own body, no matter what it looks like. Love your body. Your body is a temple. It's beautiful. Because of the way so much commercialism has spoken of women and, 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 and put women out there, and even men, about what their bodies are supposed to look like. We're ashamed of our bodies. We're uncomfortable of our bodies. We cringe if, you, if we turn and, and, there, and you feel like someone's going to touch a fat roll or I can't walk in front of you because you'll see that I've got cellulite at the top of my thighs or I've got stretch marks from where I had my child or I've got a scar across my abdomen because I had an emergency cesarean or C-section or a, I had an emergency hysterectomy and it left a scar from hip to hip. My mermaid sits right on that line. It's interesting, but the line is there. I had two breast reductions, two. And I've got scars. They're faded now, but I have scars. I wear my scars on the outside. Some of us wear our scars on the inside. Some of us have been sexually abused. And so it's very difficult for us to be touched. Whenever our body is touched, it reminds us of that experience. And it's very difficult. So this is something we may need to work through. This is a very, very sacred act. So when you are very careful about who you choose to have sex with, and joy and love and you and you treat this as a, as a very spiritual loving experience maybe things that have happened to you in your life will be able to soften and you you'll be able to make love with this partner and that you'll be able to allow them to touch you and it won't be bad it won't be dirty it won't make you feel afraid or awful about yourself Maybe you've got sexual dysfunction because of things that have happened. It's not something to, to use as recreation. You know? It's not, it's not about being better than someone else, outperforming someone else. It's not sport. It's not a game. It's about expressing what you feel and, and connecting deeply with another. And maybe you need to be really brave to allow this to happen. But you can recreate this within a relationship where you have this connection, this deep connection. Maybe in a relationship you've had distance. Maybe there's someone who's cheated and it's put distance and it's hurt you because in your mind you can't stop and think of seeing them with the other person. But you can heal this. You can ask spirit to help you heal this and recreate your lives together. And maybe there are some who aren't able to have sex in a normal way because of accidents or because of physical disabilities. 
But there's other ways you can express yourself. There's so many ways to love another. Maybe you're somebody because of religion that is judging another and their sexual preferences. Maybe you're homophobic. Maybe you don't think that you should have sex in this way. I don't think that that's right. That's dirty. Whatever goes on behind the doors, private doors of two committed partners is no one else's business but theirs. Whenever they exp whatever they choose to do to express themselves to each other in a place of honor, that is for them to embrace and none of your business. You can choose whatever and whoever and however you wish to express yourself. But it must come from a place of honor. It's got to be a choice for you that feels right. So put away what society tells you is okay and, and who they tell you it's okay to be with. Right now there's a boundary being broken through. And this is a free choice of your own. This one that's going to bring this divine sensuality of in a healthy way, in a respectful way. This is for you alone. So Spirit's encouraging you to break through the fear that's holding you back. Listen to this song. I always loved you, I knew, but I played it cool. I never let you know, because I was afraid of letting go. Someone's learning to express themselves, but maybe they weren't able to express themselves before. Say you won't let go because of the things that they'd been through, the things that they experienced, or maybe they'd never experienced love. They didn't understand it. Maybe they had never had a connection like this. Maybe they'd been with many partners, but never understood the sacred sensuality that comes from the sacred union. Or maybe they saved themselves. They were afraid of it. And maybe they're afraid to open up. But now spirit says that there's a healing taking place. You are safe. Allow yourself to be loved and to love. I'll speak with you guys soon today in our weekly reading. I love you.